Are you frustrated with buying gears but not achieving the tone that you desire? Or you bought the exact gear your favorite guitarist is using and you still don't sound as close? Well, in today's episode, I'm going to share with you the top 10 tips and tricks to throw those bad tones away. Coming up! Hi, I'm Vinny. In this channel, I talk about all things guitar related, from the top 10s, to the interesting guitar news, to tips and tricks just like this video. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing so we can all start to gain knowledge together. I do a new video every Monday, so do remember to come back next Monday for a new episode. So today, we're going to address the reasons why, despite having the top gears, top equipments, you still don't get the tone that you so desire. This video will cover tips and tricks for beginners all the way to advanced level, so do stick around to see what's in stock for you. Now I believe that if you've seen many videos out there that talks about adjusting your string height or adjusting your pickup height, I'm just going to assume that you have a decently set up guitar and you're ready to rock but the tone is just not there. So let's throw all those frustrations away and dive right in. Now the first tip I'm going to share with you is something that even advanced players are guilty of, which is muting. Basically, you need to mute your guitar in order to get good tones. Now muting comes with both sides. You can either mute with your right hand or you can mute with your left hand. Left hand, typically we do it for funk, clean tone guitar playing. And if you're going for a distorted drive sound on the right hand, it's your muting hand. So here, so here's an example of right hand muting. As you can tell, my right hand is constantly touching on the bridge and the string just around this point here. So this is where I want it muted. The thing I do to adjust the muting is either I go closer to the neck area or I go away from the neck area. The more you go to the neck, the more muted it will sound. So let's have a listen if I go extreme all the way to the neck, somewhere around above the pickup area, this is how it will sound like. As you can tell, that's not something that you want your guitar tone to sound like. That sounds constipated, right? So, but if on the other hand, if you go way too far away from the neck, right above the uh, bridge and saddle area, this is what it will sound like. Basically, not, not much of muting is done there, so we want to make sure that uh, there is an optimum point. You find your favorite position. And it also applies to power chord, very cool. And when we mute with our left hand, it's typically with a clean tone, something like this, and you may find this familiar. Now you notice that my right hand is strumming freely and it's not resting on any point of the bridge area and my left hand is actually doing all the muting. How? Let's take a look. So when I release that pressure, I'll actually cut off the sound. And it's also important where you're strumming, so if you're not actually muting the uh, 5th and 6th string, you may get this if you strum aggressively. That's not what you want. So you're gonna make sure that your strumming position is very clean. And that will be tip number 1, muting. Tip number 2 will be called the cheat muting. Tip number 2 is an advanced level of muting that's only feasible if you're in a studio or if you have one of those hair bands that's like a little caterpillar. Tip number 2 requires you to have a cloth a cleaning cloth will do, and you tie it across your fretboard. When you tie it down, you do not want to tie it way too tight, so you just want an adequate amount of pressure. What it does is to help you create a muting that's on the left side. This is particularly useful if you're trying to record a distorted tone and muting is a problem for you. 
and you know sometimes in studio you want a quick and easy way out of this this is one of the solution <laughs> I don't even need to mute my right hand and I get open, clean sound with the other strings all muted. So that is one way to get open, distorted tone with other strings muted for you. The first time I saw this was way back when someone was trying to do a cover of Joe Cetriani's song. And Joe Cetriani does a lot of tapping. So when it's tapping, you need a very, very careful muting hand. So if you're not so careful like what I'm doing right now, all you need to do is add this additional layer of fabric to your guitar and you're done. Something like this. Now you may have seen my top 10 riff video. In that video, I used the same method to record my Deep Purple track. What I did was to make sure that the 5th and 6th strings are covered and I put it back underneath my 6th string, like so. And then I went on the other side and make sure that the first and second string are wrapped around with the cloth as well. Again, you go underneath your first string this time around. There I have it, I have the perfectly muted first, second, fifth and sixth string. Third and fourth string will be left open so that I can play smoke on the water without a problem. And that will be tip number two for you, cheat muting. Tip number three will be finger pressure. Finger pressure is something that's often not looked into, especially if you are a beginner, because you'd be thinking, I need to press the string down as hard as I can in order to get that good sound. Well, that's where you're wrong. A good example will be Ingve Momstein. If you have never seen his fretboard before, I recommend you check him out because his fretboards are all entirely scalloped. And because of that, he has to play with very light touch, which of course in return, if you are able to do it, gain you extra speed. Because of the habits of touching it light, you don't have to spend the extra energy to squeeze all that string down onto the fretboard. And for regular guitar that I'm using right now, it also applies that you don't want to press the strings way too hard onto the fretboard. <laughs> As you can tell, as I press really, really hard, I actually cause the string to go sharper than it should be. For example, this note. As I, as I raise my eyebrow, I'm actually trying to press it harder. So let's try again, let's see if you can hear it. I don't even need to bend the string, and I'm actually bending the string. So what's happening here is because most of our frets today are really, really tall. So because of that, there is this distance between the string and the fretboard for you to press the string and in return, it, it can picture it, it's actually bending the string in a way vertically, sort of, right? And that's tip 3 for you, fingering pressure. Tip 4, picking angle. Picking angle is a very subjective topic because we have people like Marty Friedman who will pick in the reverse manner, check him out if you have never heard of him, and then and then we have Paul Gilbert who pick almost always forward and then we have the bluegrass people who will pick, they call it the flat picking. So if you're picking forward, this is how your tone will sound like. Backward picking. And flat picking. To me, if you need a very clean passage for a certain part of the song, flat picking is the way to go, but it is also the hardest to control because flat picking doesn't allow your pick to slide over the strings easily. However, because of that, it also produces less of the pick noise. And that is tip number 4 for you, picking angle. Tip number 5, timing and accuracy. This is again something that's really really often overlooked by most guitarists because most of the time we think we are in time when we are practicing with the metronome or with a band. However, if you ever get to zoom in close into your waveform of your recording, you will see the horrible out of sync recording you just recorded for your band. So how do you fix that? Well, I guess most music teacher will tell you that, hey, 
Just keep going with the metronome, feel the rhythm, get into the groove, get into the pocket, and you'll be fine. But I'll suggest you one better, that is to record with some software, something like a garage band or something that you can get your hands on. Record, look back at your recording. Over time, you'll gain this awareness of I need to stay in time with the metronome, even better than before. I will also recommend you something really simple to start with, maybe like four crutches in a bar, so that way you can see the sound waves spiking and you'll know if you're actually in time with the metronome. Tip number six, gain settings. Now I know some of you who are more advanced in guitar playing are getting bored of this video. Now trust me, stick around, I'm gonna review more of how you can get a very good tune out of whatever you already have. Again, tip number six, gain setting. When I first bought my Friedman BOD pedal, I was like, this beast is so hard to tame. And I even told that to the salesman, I said, it's time for me to go back home and learn how to tame this beast. And in fact, that is the thing that most people tend to miss out. What happened to most people when they get their spanking new pedal is that they will go crazy and they go, let's crank up the game channel. And that's exactly what you should not be doing to any distortion or overdrive pedals that you're buying or using. Let me switch on my BEOD pedal and right now the gain setting is on like 9 o'clock. And as you can tell, you can already hear the subtle noise that's coming out of the pedal. And bear in mind that this is a humbucker guitar. I shouldn't get this kind of noise sound, but BEOD pedal especially has got this insane amount of gain. Let's have a listen. And that is like um, a third, a quarter of whatever this pedal can offer in terms of gain stage. So what if I crank it up to the craziest maximum level? I feel like my speaker is just gonna crack and explode. Let's have a listen. It's actually not too bad, but sometimes, depending on your application, this amount of gain is just insane. Now, I like this pedal because there's a range of gain from normal to insanity, like what you've just heard, and I can play Linkin Park without a problem at all. But in terms of playing a lead solo sound, probably not the best and ideal situation to crank your gain all the way to the top. Let's have a listen. So it gets a little noisy, it's nice, it's fun, it's easier to play actually because when you crank up your gain, you're pretty much compressing the tone, the, the signal to a, a, a limit where it doesn't have any spike or any dynamics. So it makes your playing seemingly a lot easier and it kind of promotes a lot of bad habit as you develop. So my advice is if you have a pedal like mine, you probably want to set it slightly lower. So right now I'm slightly below half of the gain and this is how it should sound like. Not too bad, but usually from here I'll spend my time nitpicking on how that gain should be and maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more and also depending highly on the backing track that you're playing to. And that's tip number six, gain settings. Next up, tip number seven, EQ setting. I cannot emphasize enough on EQ setting because EQ is pretty much the holy grail of setting a good tone. And over the years, I've learned that every specific genre has a kind of specific EQ preference for the guitar. And I've listed them below, as you can see right now. So if you're more of a blues player, you probably want more meat tone spiking up. If you're more of a heavy metal player and you're riffing away, you probably want your meat to be scooped away. And if you're more of a funk player and you're playing a lot of clean tone, usually we only want the treble sound of the guitar. So the sound of guitar really highly depends on what kind of music you are making. Most pedals these days do come with a simple EQ section where they have the bass, mid, treble, knob, so they can tweak the sound of that particular pedal. But if you can, 
put a graphic EQ over the entire pedal board will drastically improve your overall sound because that also means that you are now tweaking the sound of the chorus, tweaking the sound of your whatever pedal that is in the chain. And that is tip number seven, EQ settings. Tip number eight, master volume setting. Most guitarists fail to see the importance of the master volume and they will be like, oh, all right, if I were to just set it slightly softer and I can accommodate my band, my tone will not be affected. Wrong. Now, we're talking about headroom the master volume provides. With a proper cabinet and a master volume set correctly, and of course, if you are given the luxury to crank up your amplifier, you can get a lot more headroom and dynamics through a properly uh, crank up amplifier. However, master volume is not the do it and end all solution to a good tone, to open sound as they say. Well, sometimes a combination of everything matters, so you don't have to be frustrated if your band member says, hey, turn your amplifier down, and you, in return you say like, no, 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 I need my good tone. Don't have to worry because with modern technologies today, we don't really need to crank up the master volume to get the extra headroom. But of course, if you have the luxury, please crank up your master volume. And that is tip number eight, master volume settings. Tip number nine, delay and reverb. Most of the time, delay and reverb are overlooked by many guitarists. I myself is guilty of that because for many years, I've been following Mr. Paul Kubert and he uses very minimal delay and reverb. But with a good delay and reverb settings, you actually amplify and magnify your guitar tone. Let me show you the difference between a dry signal and the one with delay and reverb added. One thing I'll point out about delay and reverb setting is that you don't want to go extreme. You want to keep it minimal unless the delay is supposed to create some sort of feedback effect, like much like a dotted 8 delay kind of effect. So if used correctly, it actually makes your guitar tone a lot bigger than it is. I think the best person to look into this is John Petrucci from Dream Theater. And that is tip number 9 for you, delay and reverb. The last tip for today's video is about capturing your guitar tone. Now after spending a lot of effort tweaking your amplifier, tweaking your pedal, tweaking your guitar and the microphone setting, the sound that went into your computer didn't sound like the sound that you have in your mind, then everything is wrong. For many years, I have been using a dynamic microphone with a condenser microphone pointing at my guitar amplifier, but I have a problem with this is that every time I record somehow the microphone position will shift. Now, I know what you're thinking. You can put a little L tape, a tape that's shaped like an L, under the skin of the, uh, or the, the grill cloth of the amplifier. Yes, that's one way you can do so. However, this kind of thing can be a little inconsistent as from time to time. So put it this way, if you're working and then you went out for lunch, someone shifted your microphone even with the tape I guarantee you, the sound will probably sound slightly different. I guess the best solution for today's guitar recording is to embark on the new technology called IR, Impulse Response. Now, if you know of this person, Pete Thorne, he recently released his new amplifier made by Sir Guitar, and it has included the section IR, where you can direct your amplifier sound right into your computer. And that is very cool. For me, I'm not using that amplifier and I'm using the MOA radar, which I talk about it in another video. You can find the link in the description below. From there, you can learn how I capture my guitar tone with a high percentage of success rate every single time. So there you have it, 10 tips and tricks to improve your guitar tone right away. I hope this video has benefited you in getting your guitar tone in time to come. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing to us because I'll be making a new video every Monday for this community. If you have a question, don't hesitate to leave it in the comment below. There I can answer you directly or I can take it and make a whole entire video out of it. I'm Vinny. Hope you had a good time watching this video and learned something out of it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.